Hello everybody, Reverend Dr. Rajay. Now, I've noticed that a lot of people are talking more and more about Jesus, whether it be the truth about Jesus, you know, the praise and the worship of Jesus, or the, the others who are on the end of mocking and ridiculing Jesus. But, I have noticed over the past couple of months that one thing that everybody seems to agree about, um, you know, Christians and you know people who follow Christ, uh, particularly the pastors, um, as well as non-believers, all tend to agree on something about Jesus. Believers and non-believers alike tend to believe that if Jesus was to be around today, he would have long hair, he would have a beard, he would more than likely be poor, he'd be a well-rounded, you know, very kind individual, some people suggest that he might be homeless, you know, some people, you know, go as far as saying he'd be poor, but he'd have a home. Others suggest that he'd be homeless. But everybody also agrees that despite the fact of what he would look like and how he'd be as an individual today, if he was here today, they also feel that not one church out there would hire him. Why? Because he's got long hair and a beard. Uh, he has a thing with children. You know, can't just run the kids, I don't know who this guy is. Um, a lot of parents of children wouldn't want their children to be around this man. And what? Because it doesn't fit society's description of what a professional individual is supposed to look like. He doesn't fit into the societal norm. But he didn't fit into the societal norm back when he was here 2,000 years ago either. He challenged the very foundations of the Jewish faith. The entire religion of Christianity is based on the challenges that Jesus brought to the Jewish tradition. If he went right along with it, then we'd all be calling ourselves Jews today. But we're not, because he, he came down here with a message from the Heavenly Father to preach to all of us down here to try to get us back on the correct path. Because unfortunately, you know, just as today, back then, you know, the Roman Empire, as well as the Pharisees and the different uh, sects of Judaism, you know, all the, all the priests of the, of the Jews, uh, the rabbis, were uh, corrupt. It was all about rituals and, and um, tradition more so than it was the message that was being preached. And that's what Jesus came down here to correct so he didn't exactly fit in to society 2,000 years ago either. But because everybody, believers and unbelievers alike, agree that he wouldn't fit into society today, everybody would have a problem being around this man. Nobody would want his children around this man. And there's not one church out there that would hire him. Not one. Now, if he had a shaved head or if he cut his hair and was clean shaven and dressed in a suit and tie, uh, maybe, you know, middle class, upper middle class, then they might consider high on him. Now, the question that I have for all of you out there, you know, especially if you consider yourself to be a follower of Christ. I really don't care if you belong to a denomination or, you know, if you uh, what denomination it is or 
if you're non-denominational, where you you know you you practice by yourself or with your family, as opposed to going to an, an established church. Not, well, that's irrelevant. Just simply put, if you are a follower of Christ, if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you believe that Christ is uh, the Son of God as well as God Himself, if you believe that He came down here for us, if you believe that He is in fact God, and you follow His teachings, and you are awaiting His return, then how can you say that you follow this man, that you follow Jesus Christ's teachings, and you cannot await his return, if you are going to suggest that just based on what the Bible suggests of Jesus, and what the mainstream uh, varieties of Christianity promotes of Jesus, that because Jesus, if he was here today, would more than likely be poor, would have long hair and a beard, would have a thing about, you know, being around children and telling children stories and, and whatnot, <laughs> that you would not trust him with your child, and you would not hire him to work at your church, how can you say that you follow him? You know, everybody has a very clear picture of what Jesus would look like today of how he would be as an overall person, just based on, you know, their church's teachings, on the mainstream uh, teachings of Christianity, and what the interpretations of the Bible bring to us. Okay. Based on that, we've put together what we feel he would be as a person. We've put together what we feel he would look like. We've even put together where in society he would be. But we're going to go the extra step and say we wouldn't trust our children with him and we wouldn't hire him to work in our church. Yet, we're also going to say that we follow this man. That we believe he is God. We're waiting for his return. We believe that he is the truth. That he is the light. That he is life. Um, we all go to church and and worship this man. We all pray in this man's name. And again, we're all waiting for his return. But, when he returns, we're not going to allow him to be around our children, and we wouldn't hire him to work in our church. Do you people really see the, the uh, contradiction in those two d statements? You believe in him. You trust him. You feel he's God. You are waiting for his return. On the other hand, you wouldn't trust him with your children, and you wouldn't hire him to work in your church if he was here today. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? I don't know, it's just, it might just be me. I might just be that crazy. Everybody that tells me that I'm crazy might be right. I might actually be crazy. But for some reason, I cannot understand why somebody would believe that, uh, that an individual is God himself, He's the truth. He's life. He's everything. You worship him. You pray to him. You follow his teachings. But then you turn around and you wouldn't hire him to work in your church that is dedicated to, his, to this man's worship and, and the uh, spreading of this man's teachings. And you wouldn't Trust man with your children. That 
Ah, that just doesn't make any sense to me. So, now that I'm rambling on, and I'm sure I've repeated this, you know, more times than, you know, many of you can handle, I pose my question. Can you really consider yourself a follower of Christ? I mean, think about that for a second. Can you really suggest that you are a follower of Christ if on one hand he's God, he's all that is, all that was, and all that ever will be, and you're out there spreading his teachings, claiming to follow his teachings, but on the other hand you wouldn't trust him around your children, and you wouldn't hire him to work in your church. Some people even went as far as saying that, that they'd lock him up in a white padded cell. Can you really consider yourself a follower of Christ if that's really what you believe? I mean, if you're really going to suggest that this man is God himself, you are about spreading this man's teachings. You worship this man. You pray to this man. You have buildings erect for the worship of this man and for the spreading of this man's teachings. Then wouldn't it be common sense that you, you would also trust him with your family and with your children? And wouldn't it you know, make a little bit of sense to uh, want this man to work in your church or possibly lead your church since you worship this man? So, I don't know, folks. How can you suggest... You know, please leave me in the comments in the comment section, okay? Uh, no action on remarks, please. But honestly, how can you suggest that you're a follower of Christ if you're going to turn around and believe that if he was here today, based on his appearances and based on the fact that he might very well be poor if he was around today, that you would not be able to trust him with your family and you would not hire him to work in your church? How does that make any sense? Now, are we really going to judge God himself to what our society society standards are? I mean, with us, this society man feels that it's appropriate to be middle class, upper middle class, short haircuts, clean shaven face, suit and tie. Are we really going to expect God to come down here and obey our uh, rituals, our traditions, what we feel is appropriate, or would he do as he's done before and challenge the very status quo, challenge our rituals and our traditions and try to prove to us the error of our ways and enlighten us with the truth. I mean, it's just, to me, it's common sense, folks. I mean, Christ was very clear in, in, you know, pointing out everything that was wrong with not just Judaism, but with every faith out there, right down to, to the sacrifices. He was trying to preach the truth to all people. He was trying to uh, correct where uh, the teachings have gone wrong over time. So what makes you think if 2,000 years ago he came down here and he did not bow down to the societal norms and the rituals and the traditions of the Roman Empire or the Jewish people of 2,000 years ago, what makes you think that if he was to come back today that he would bow down to today's societal norms and rituals? 
which he not do as he did 2,000 years ago, and try to bring about the truth and correct everybody in, in their fallacies. And that's just my opinion. You know, after all, I am only human. I, I, might, I might be wrong, but to me, that's just common sense. And if I met Jesus in real life, where I had not a shadow of a doubt in my mind that this man that stood before me was in fact Jesus Christ himself, and he indeed had long hair and a beard and was poor, well, I'm poor, I got long hair and a beard as you can see, so why would that bother me? It wouldn't. But aside from that, if I really felt this man in front of me was Jesus, why wouldn't I trust him with my children? Why wouldn't I want to hire him to work in my ministry? I mean, after all, we are supposed to be followers of Christ. Christ is supposed to be the head of our churches or ministries. Jesus Christ is supposed to be, you know, the it. If he was to come back today, and you wouldn't hand over your church to Jesus, or at least hire him as an employee of your church or ministry. You know, that says something right there about your faith and about what you're really all about. I mean, how can you truly believe that the man that can be before you is Jesus Christ and not trust him with the position in your church? And at the same time, of course, of the follow of Christ. I mean, that just it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. You know, if all the people out there, believer and unbeliever alike, are going to try to suggest that, okay, fine, Jesus comes back, he's got a beard, he's got long hair, he's probably poor, maybe homeless, but he has a very wealthy position, he's good with kids, he's got great stories, he's all about the Heavenly Father, no, wouldn't harm a fly, but you would call him nuts, lock him up in a white padded cell, wouldn't trust him around your families, and you wouldn't hire him to work at your church. People, that just doesn't make any sense. Are you followers of Christ or are you followers of man? Are you following the teachings of Christ or are you following the traditions of man? Have we really come that far from what Jesus tried to do to us? I mean, I understand it's been 2,000 years. In 2,000 years, you know, in our perception is a rather long time, but in the grand scheme of things, it really isn't. So let me ask you again. Have we really come that far where we have removed ourselves to the extreme of Jesus' true teachings? I mean, it's pretty pathetic when everybody, believers and unbelievers alike, have a good idea and can agree on what Jesus would look like, and what his societal status would be, and what his personality and disposition would be like, but yet also agree that they'd lock him from the right side cell, wouldn't harm to work in their church, and wouldn't trust on their families. I mean, that's a little outrageous. Do you hear yourselves thinking or speaking when you're suggesting these ideas? I mean, people, come on now. I'm, I'm not going to go over it again. I'm not going to repeat, repeat myself again. I Just give me an answer to my question. How can you call yourself a follower of Christ if this man came walking up to you 
you knew without a shadow of a doubt that he was Jesus Christ, how can you close up a follow of Christ if you would not let him work in your church, you would not trust him with your family, and you would recommend he be locked up in a white padded cell? Just please answer that question for me. I don't understand how you can call yourself a follower of Christ if you wouldn't trust Jesus Christ himself if he was here today. Especially based solely on physical appearances and social status. What you need to be, if he was middle class and clean cut, it would be okay, but if he was long haired, facial haired, and uh, poor, it would be a problem. I, I mean, come on, people. How are we really that far removed from Jesus' teachings? And for all you pastors out there, have you really become that far removed from the very message it is you're supposed to be preaching to your people? I understand a lot of pastors out there are all about numbers. We got, we're going to give up on this and give up on that belief to bring people into the church. But that's all about money and greed. Nothing more. It doesn't matter if your church only has but one person in there seated in the benches. Or fold up chairs depending on how your setup is. So long as you are preaching the truth and that individual is hearing the truth. That individual will go out and mention about what you are preaching, the name of your church, and where you're located. And over time, you might get people. Yeah, it's a slow go. But at least you can lay down in bed at night, and you'll be able to look at yourself in the mirror the next morning, knowing that you are preaching the truth, and you are doing what you claim you have been called to do. And that is to preach Christ's message. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Do, you, do any of you see what I'm getting at here? It seems to me a lot of Christians, pastors included, are taking it on more or less as a type of social status or a social title. I don't... I, really don't feel that too many people out there truly believe in the Christian doctrine or that, you know, too many of these people that call themselves Christian are actually Christians. You know, this isn't about, you know, fitting into a certain societal class of people or going to church for two hours on a Sunday. It's a lifestyle. You are to have an open dialogue with your Heavenly Father and with Christ on a constant basis. You are to be 24-7, 365, trying in your utmost to act as Christ-like as possible. And everybody makes mistakes. We're only human. But, but, to not trust Jesus with your family or you know, with the position in your church, if he was around today, because he might be poor and based on social appearances. I'm sorry, people. Just please answer my question. You know, I'm going to shut up now. How can you call yourself a Christ follower, in all honesty, if Jesus Christ was here today? And you wouldn't trust them. How can you say you follow them if you don't trust them? Simple question. Believers and non-believers alike all seem to agree on that. So for all you people that follow Christ, how can you say you follow Christ if you don't trust them? Or at least if you was here today, you wouldn't trust them. How can you say you follow them? How can you say you believe in them? Serious question. I would like 
some serious answers. No asinine remarks, please. Thank you. God bless.